Welcome to the Why Connect podcast. As the heartbeat of the community, the Why is a connector where people of all ages and walks of life come together to elevate their health, wellness, education, and essential life skills. Hear the stories of impact and join the authentic conversations where together we'll discover the journeys and pathways people take to connect through the Why. Now your hosts, Zarina, Robert, and Allison. Welcome back to Why Connect. We are so excited for today's episode. One of the things that we're doing at the Why over the next um, couple of years, we started this with our strategic plan, is that we believe that the Why can show up in areas of town where there might not be a brick and mortar. We call it a Why on the Fly model, a Why without walls. And so today's guests are going to talk about the work that we're doing in that area. So let me go ahead and introduce them. So um, Alea Taylor joins us. She is our Youth Development Director for the Andrew and Walter Young Y. She's from Maryland, and she started her career at the Y, actually, while working um, while she was in school at Virginia State University, getting her degree in psychology with a concentration in childhood development. She moved to Atlanta in 2019. She was attending Georgia State, where she earned a master's degree in educational psychology. And then the YMCA of Metro Atlanta snagged her to be our Youth Development Director, like I said said at the Andrew and Walter Young Y. In her role, she oversees the Y's food distribution program, the middle school at Promise after school program, which sits on the Andrew and Walter Young Y campus, and she assists with the teen program. Risa Rivera, she is our aquatics director for the Cecil Pruitt Community Center Family Y in Canton. Risa has been the aquatics director at this center for quite some time. She began working at the Y in 2016 as an assistant swim coach. She brought unique, or she brings rather unique offerings to the Y, including a mermaid morning, scuba Santa, through a partnership with Dive Haven, which is a local scuba, sh scuba shop, and even a pumpkin wow. patch in the pool during their <laughs> yearly fall festival. Nice. Risa <laughs> lives in Canton with her two active children and her dog. And then joining us from the Decatur Family Y is Safia Penke. Safia is the Community Impact Coordinator for the Decatur Family Y. She began her Y career 23 years ago. And in 1999, she started as the front desk opener. Since then, she has worn many hats. She's been a membership associate, front desk supervisor, financial development coordinator. And today she has a dual role in philanthropy and social impact. And as the social impact coordinator for the Decatur Family Y, she leads a weekly effort to serve families who live mm -hmm. in extended stay motels welcome everyone we are so glad you're thank here you. welcome thank you thank you for Absolutely. having us <laughs> yes and so we're going <laughs> to kick it off and get started with Leia and Safia my question mm. for you ladies as I understand you both lead food and security efforts at your Y yet the focus of your support differs could you describe the work you do taking the Y outside its walls and into the community and who is that Risa, you to? For Leia and Safia. Okay. Leia, Safia, do you want to go, go first? I can go first. Um, I don't have no problem. Okay, go ahead. Go okay. right ahead. Um, so here, here over here at Andrew Walter Young, we service two off-sites and also one um, on-site <laughs> community every Thursday. Um, also, we service, we just got a grant to be able to service back to after school and our at-promise team to service them bi-weekly. So we feed about 315 families weekly. Um, it's a lot. Um, we love it over here. Uh, but Thursdays is very busy. We have deliveries. We have a truck to deliver about 830 um, every Thursday and pallets and pallets of food that we bring on in. Um, my team is amazing. Sin is heaven sent. Um, he's been doing this for about a year and a half. Um, and yeah, so that's what we do around the Atlanta area. We've serviced a Providence Senior Citizen Home that's like two minutes up the road. And we also service the Apple Tree Apartments, which is right next door, um, that he delivers food to weekly as well for the families who cannot make it on site to come pick it up. Leah, that is a tremendous effort. Can you describe um, what that has been like in terms of the relationships you've developed with the seniors and the families you're serving? Absolutely. So I think going to the senior citizen home and just being able to go into their 
area of, of the town. Like I said, it's two minutes away. So going to them for them, some of those can, some of them can drive, some of them can't drive. And so if we can deliver the food to them, it's a blessing because like I said, a lot of them have been using this YMCA, either their kids have come to swim or be a part of the after school or camp. And so the fact that we're still serving them in their older age, it's just a blessing to see the community right next door to us, the apartments, some of them work and can't come at 1.30 to go grab the food or come get the beat so that we can be a blessing. So we drop it off to them and they're able to pick it up when they get off work. So just seeing them excited and ecstatic, just to see like, oh my God, a community that love, that's right next door still loves us, still serves us, still you know, just wants to support. It's it's beautiful. Wow. Very, very. That's great. Mm -hmm. Safia, um, yes. do you mind answering Zarina's question and telling our listeners more about the work that you're doing out in the community and serving families in extended stay motels? No, I don't mind talking about that at all. Um, we've been doing that for the last two years. The actual project began back in 2019. Uh, however, the, ser the hotels we're servicing now are recent in the last two years. We service three extended stay hotels on the Memorial Drive area up through Stone Mountain. Mm. And uh, what we do is we go out two days a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I call it, our bus is a, a mobile grocery store. Um, mm -hmm. On Tuesdays, we provide clothing, dried goods, uh, crock pots, pots, pans, diapers, a, a lot of the things that the, the other young lady was speaking about. And then on Thursdays, we provide groceries, food, uh, food that we were lucky enough to pick up also from the East Lake YMCA and food that's donated to us from Sprouts and Publix and, and stores like that. Um, hmm. So this is what we do on a daily basis. We service about 70 families a week. You know, it's a very transitory lifestyle. So you never know what day, how many people you'll have come out to the bus, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, both of you are doing outstanding work. Um, I have the privilege yes, of uh, witnessing uh, Leah at work um, every Thursday. And then don't let the short hair fool you. She's she's out there working hard <laughs> as well as everybody else. Um, <laughs> Risa, this question is for you. Uh, as an Y Aquatics Director, um, what does Y Without Walls look like in terms of swim safety? And if you could please share uh, the work that you have been doing within that space. Absolutely. So um, that's a great question. A why without walls? We've had the great opportunity to go out into our community of Cherokee County and provide safety around water dry land classes for, um, we had the lofty goal of reaching one elementary school and we reached out to a Title I school, Hasty Elementary. And um, they were so kind to host us last year. We serviced about 500 students. And this year, just about a week and a half ago, I had the opportunity to go back. Um, I brought um, a couple of my lifeguards and swim instructors. Uh, last time I brought Olivia Franklin, this time I brought uh, Josh Francis. And we shared our message. And since the Y is open to and serving all, um, we just love the opportunity to go and share the message of um, asking permission before you even touch water, uh, bringing an adult, and not just bringing an adult, but bringing an adult water watcher. Someone who's there, who's not on their electronics, who's really um, focused on the children in the pool. Uh, lifeguards right. are there certainly to um, prevent injuries and kind of monitor the, the pool as a whole, but we want parents to be there, be within arm's reach of their children. We also talk about um, reaching or extending something to somebody who's in trouble and not just actually climbing in after somebody because that creates um, a potential hazard as well. And we always talk about um, wearing Coast Guard approved items and keeping them buckled, keeping them on and um, not taking them back off until you're on um, solid ground. And so we've had that, that wonderful opportunity and we'll actually be um, doing that again for our Healthy Kids Day tomorrow here at our own facility, but um, bringing it back to the community again. We have um, extended our goal this year with the, the help of our board, and we are going to visit Liberty Elementary uh, this coming Monday. Nice. So I'm very excited about great that. Great work. Great work. Nice. Great work. Really, 
inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Risa. My next question mm-hmm. is back to Safia around the mm-hmm. work you're doing. Um, I mm-hmm. am. I think a lot of our listeners would be curious to know what is the response like when your uh, mobile grocery shows up at an extended stay hotel. What are you hearing from families? Well, what I'm hearing is gratitude, grateful, happy, and hopeful. Um, Mm. and expectation. They have an expectation for us. I had one young lady tell me that um, they look forward to the weekend because Monday's coming around and they know on Tuesday, the bus is gonna show up with whatever Mm. they need for their families. So what I hear is a lot of gratitude. You know, they're very, very grateful for uh, the work that the Y is doing out there. And in collaboration with other agencies, I mean, a, a lot of these people are in some really, really challenging situations, and and sometimes mm-hmm. their their next concern is where are they going to sleep tonight? And um, mm-hmm. we're fortunate enough that we are able to reach out and collaborate with other agencies, such as St. Vincent de Paul, who has mm-hmm. many, many times come to our rescue to help a family from being on the street with their five children. Um, We've had to use the bus sometimes just to to take people from one hotel to another. I've had mothers who were mm. sitting outside with five of her children who just got evicted that day. And mm. and because of the the capacity rule of not having a child of uh, more than two or three people in a room, uh, they evicted her. And she was out on the street with five of her children sleeping on the stairwell. And she told me she had another place to go. And so I said, just let me finish what I'm doing and service, you know, giving everybody their groceries. I put her and her family on the bus with all of their groceries and took them to another hotel, which was not in our service area. But I said to her, keep the children on the bus and you just go up there and you get the room. You know what I mean? So that you can get Mm -hmm. you and your children in the room for the night. So we run into many, many of those situations. It's actually heart wrenching. And I I just admire the tenacity of these people to deal with the circumstances that they're dealing with. So it keeps me very humbled. I'm very humbled by this experience and feel very fortunate to have been selected to do this work. God bless you. So that's where I'm at with that. What you're doing. It, it's, 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 volunteers are the key to this. I mean, it's it, volunteers are the key to this, but doing this work will keep you humbled. It will keep no you doubt. humbled and make you realize how important it is that the Y continue doing this. We are making a difference. You know, we, we can maybe only move a few from that hotel to a home, but if we can do that, okay. we've changed somebody's life. You know, so absolutely. absolutely. Well, that's stated. where we're at. Well yes. stated. Thank you for sharing that, Safia. My question is for Leia. With all the great work that you all are doing, Leia, what have you appreciated most about the senior community that you're serving each week? Um, oh, so hard to follow, Safia. That was beautiful. Um, <laughs> but I think you, do, you, know, uh, you know what it is, huh? Yeah. You know what it is, so, Leah, so you know. Yes, yeah. I, I feel it's so every Thursday. I'm just like, I'm grateful. Like, what can you do but be grateful? There's nothing you can right. be but grateful. Like, there's no other emotion. Um, I think older people have a special place in my heart because, especially when it comes to the food program, my grandparents um, was grateful enough to be a part of the community. I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Meals on Wheels. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so yes. this, yeah. this reminds me of that, just being able, and I've never worked for Mills of Wills, but it was just like, I knew every day my grandparents were having something great to eat. I was not worried. We were not worried. Her children wasn't worried. Her grandkids weren't worried. And so the fact that I can support a family, somebody's grandmother, somebody's mom, somebody's dad, somebody, somebody's aunt, right. like it, it's, to me, it's like, I'm grateful. Like, I'm just, I'm grateful to do it. It is definitely one of my favorite part of the job working at a nonprofit is just watching the YMCA continue to bless people outside Mm -hmm. of the four walls. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's do you ever bring the, I didn't, I didn't prepare this question ahead of time, but do you bring the youth with you at all to um, spend time giving food to the seniors to that cross-generational piece? 
We have not. We do. We would love to do that this summer. Um, yeah. Last summer was my first time at the YMCA, so I didn't. I hadn't planned it, but I definitely would love to do it. Now that the kids will be out of school, and the, the same time that we do give the food away, the kids, will, the youth, will be on campus, on site. Right. So I would love maybe one day, even one day, one day out the month for them to serve them, maybe make hot mm-hmm. plates for them or something. I am. Mm-hmm. I am thinking about doing something so they can give back and they can right. feel yeah. the feeling that we feel every Thursday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. What a balancing act you do, doing yeah. youth development work and food um, insecurity right. work. It's impressive, mm-hmm. very impressive. Yeah. 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 And in, in the area that we are in, that Leia and I are in, um, off Camelton Road in Southwest Atlanta, it has historically been underserved. And um, with her efforts in the food distribution, as well as her contribution that she brings to um, at Promise Day, at Promise Center, the, de- the relationship that she's able to develop and, and Allison, as you said, just that balance, that bridge that she's able to build between the youth and the um, and the the adults, the older adults is amazing. Um, Risa, I have a question for you and it's in relation to um, serving uh, underserved communities as well. Um, share the reasons why it's important for the why to take swim safety, swim safety education out into the community, if you will. Certainly. So, um, again, another tough act to follow. I had the pleasure <laughs> of um, doing um, food service during COVID, and that it is. It's very humbling. Um, but back to water safety, the reason we take it out into the community is I think it's about 71% in, of our Earth's surface is covered with water. So there's not a moment that you're not touching water at some point in time. Um, I usually lead off my talk with, you know, do you take a bath? Do you take a shower? Have you ever fed the plants at home? Do you get a drink of water? Wash your hands. Um, touch your hand in the fish tank with permission, of course. I know the Georgia Aquarium will let me do it. (laughs) But um, there are so many things where we come in contact with water and just kind of reminding before you even touch it, you know, asking permission. But that water safety piece is so important. And, um, you know, you might only tell one person um, if something wonderful happens. And so um, we just hope that they'll they'll share those messages to at least one person, maybe one friend. Mm. And it, it hopefully it sticks. We're hoping that it will right. be something long term and they'll be like, oh, I remember this. And I remember someone from the Y came into my class and told me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so we hope they'll, they'll pass that enthusiasm and those safety messages to others. Yeah, with your passion that no doubt they will. Seriously. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I have a question for the whole group and you can decide amongst yourselves who wants to answer it. But if I'm a listener and I'm hearing what you're doing, how can our listeners support you? What do you need? Volunteers. Mm-hmm. Get the words out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> volunteers, <laughs> continuous <laughs> volunteers, donate and continual donations. I mean, a lot mm-hmm. of the product that we bring out into the communities is coming from within this community. Uh, the right. food is coming from within this community. The clothing, the shoes, uh, the toiletries. Mm-hmm. I mean, basic things. Toilet tissue. I mean, they're paying a dollar or two dollars for a roll of toilet tissue. I mean. Those little basic needs are extremely important to the people who are underserved and in the outside area of our communities. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Absolutely. And they do say it takes a village, you know, to raise a child, mm-hmm. but it takes a village to raise our communities. And um, mm-hmm. we are right in the middle of our Why It Matters campaign. And um, mm-hmm. so you could certainly go online and donate it ymcaatlanta.org. <laughs> and um, we also need volunteers. Um, I'm hiring, so you can certainly come if you want to be a school instructor, you can come teach. Um, right. You can certainly come out in the community with me and send these great messages and, and reach others. Um, and also on, on our end, take a swim lesson. I mean, we, we run swim lessons not just for kids, it's for adults too. And um, you know, just being confident around water will encourage others to enjoy it like you do. I might sign up for that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's good. I've heard that throughout your life you should get refreshers on swimming because you you it doesn't hurt to remind yourself about some of those simple skills that you need um, if you're faced mm -hmm. in a dangerous situation in water. Thank very you. True. Very true. Wow. Mm. And if I may, uh, before this last question is asked, I love the fact that we're speaking to the humanity. I think the work that you all are doing, um, the YMCA has so many different programs and, and reach so many different people, but I think exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing speaks to the humanity of the YMCA and is the, is the foundation for what and who we are. Mm, that's right. Okay. Yes. Yep. When the Y was first founded, we didn't have these brick and mortar buildings we do now. The mm -hmm. Y started with volunteers and, um, you know, in community rooms, churches. And so kind of getting back to our roots, this Y without walls um, yeah. approach to how we serve the community is integral to our, our whole ethos. So uh, right. thank you for pointing that out, Robert. Yep, thank you for that, Robert. Now, here we are. As we end each episode, we customarily close by asking our guests their pathway to the Y story. What we want to know is how did you first get connected to the YMCA? And if you don't mind, Safia, we'll start with you. Um, I first came to the Y when I moved from New York. I didn't have a Y where I was living. I wish they had when my kids were growing up. It would have been great. Um, but uh, I was working in Starbucks downtown Decatur, and the gentleman that I was working with had acquired a scholarship from the Y, and he told me about the Y, said, yeah, go down the street, you know, you can go get a scholarship, you know. So I went down there, and I got a scholarship and wanted to get my kids into the Y, and and about uh, 30 days later, I walked back in and there was a guy at the front desk on the phone. He was frantic. He could, he was by himself. And I was like, you guys need help in here? And he was like, yeah, man, I wish they'd hired somebody, you know, so I applied. I mean, because he, he was frantic. I remember it was George. And uh, so he said, uh, I had the scholarship. I was already working out, had my kids in. I applied for the job. It took about a month for the guy to even give me a call at the time. And I remember I said, well, I'm going to step beyond this. And I called Cindy Benson, who was the associate director. And I said, I just need an interview. You know what I mean? And she got me an interview and then I got the job. And here I've been ever since. It's the best job I ever had. And if I, if I, could, if I didn't need the money, I'd do it for free. But uh, right. it has been the best <laughs> career I've ever had. I love it. Nice. Okay. I love that's how I got here. All right, ladies, who's next? I can go. Um, I actually found out about the why because on college we had a bunch of career days. Um, and so actually um, two young ladies came and they set up a table and said, hey, we have jobs. We're hiring for the summer. We're hiring. We need counselors. Um, and I said, wait a minute. I've heard about the why. I never I didn't grow up in the why. The DMV didn't have a lot of whys. I think we had like two whys in D.C. So I didn't grow up in a while, but I've always heard my friend was taking swim lessons and she was like, I love it. I'm learning how to swim. And I'm like, well, I already know how to swim. Like, I don't need to go there. Like, I already know how to swim. But she said, I got a job. She was like, girl, I just got this job as a camp counselor. She was like, I want you to do it with me. I don't want to do it myself. And I said, oh, I need a job. I don't want to go back home. I was a junior in college. And I said, okay, I'm going to get this job. And then my mom's going to let me in the apartment and I'm going to stay here. I got the job. I worked two summers. I did, um, so, like I said, summer camp, and then I she asked me, "Did I want to do after school?" I said, "I don't have nothing to do after school. I do my go to my classes. I can go get some extra money." I said, "Absolutely." Nice. Unfortunately, when I moved here, I was I became a teacher. COVID hit. I got my master's, and I said, "I where, where, I want to go back to something that I I thoroughly enjoy." And I mm. remembered, I said, "I love the why." I love the Y. I never really was able because my schools were off campus. They were off site. So I didn't really get a chance to go to the Y unless we had a meeting. But every time I went, it was warm. They were welcoming. It was just the energy was always great. And so I'm like, let me go. So I, I, I used to write curriculums for the city of Decatur. So boring. The most boring job ever. <laughs> so I, I have to figure out something that I like to do. I'm like, this is boring. I need to do something. I want to yeah. interact with people. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. So I yeah. went online. I said, somebody has to, has, has to be hiring somewhere. And Montiel gave me an interview. And I said, I love this lady. And she got yes. me the job. And I've been here. And I love it. Um, like Safia said, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite jobs. Yeah, it's Perfect. like I found my purpose. You know what I mean? I yeah. found my purpose when Absolutely. I came to the Y. I found my purpose. Absolutely. 
and there's nothing mm. like it in the world, you know? Oh, you just yeah, keep growing from it. there, you know? Mm-hmm. It really right. shows. Yep. It really mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. Risa, what about you? So I think that I did indoor soccer when I was probably four in Pennsylvania, but I reconnected with the Y. Um, I, she was a teacher back in the day and um, I had recently moved and wasn't into teaching and there wasn't a spot for me at that time. And I was like, well, I used to lifeguard when I was 15. So let me go to the Y and see if I can get a job. And sure enough, I was lifeguarding. I was doing swim instruction. Um, I was actually, while I was there, I got pregnant with my daughter. So I was um, coming out to the master's class to teach very pregnant and um, 5 a.m. in North Carolina. (laughs) And um, my daughter had her first swim at the Y. Um, I still see that picture. I have good friends from the Y. I I still see that picture that comes up on Facebook as a memory. Mm -hmm. And I have to share it every time just because it's so Mm -hmm. sweet. I think she was probably only four, four and a half months old at the time. And um, wow. Yeah. And and now I'm here. I've done all the things, the, the swim lessons, the lifeguarding, the swim coaching, um, now the safety on water, dry land um, mm-hmm. here in Atlanta. And um, yeah, it's it's been really wonderful. And my kids, of course, are Y kids. They swim on the swim team. They do all, <laughs> all the exciting activities. They just took a guitar class recently here. So oh, yeah, wow. nice. they're, they're Y kids for sure. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Thank you all so much yes. for being here mm-hmm. and sharing your passion, your purpose, your story, yes. and for taking the why outside the walls of our whys mm-hmm. into areas of our community where the community needs us most. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It was lovely meeting Keep you, ladies. Leading with your hearts. Okay. Keep leading with your hearts, ladies. You Keep leading with your hearts. <laughs> you. Thank you. There you go. Thank for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Been great. Thank you. Been good to us. Thank you for listening to the Why Podcast. To continue the conversation or to find your closest why, please connect with us at ymcaatlanta.org and sign up for our newsletter, Healthy Together. Thank you.